Hello, this is Debbie and this is Light Up Your Worth. I am so, 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 so excited. I can, I'm not going to be able to say excited enough today to share this episode with you with my friend, Dr. Lisa Thompson, Thomas, and she's a best-selling author, speaker, a Galactica ambassador, an intuitive transformational coach. She specializes in human designs and past life regression. She supports and empowers women to intentionally design their best life by living from their yes so that they can embrace self-love, trust their intuition, and gracefully move through their fears to take inspired action to live a life they love. Her books, these best-selling author of Sacred Soul Love, Manifesting True Love and Happiness by Revealing and Healing Blockages and Limitations, Sacred Soul Spaces, Designing Your Personal Oasis, and her latest book, which is I Can't Put Down, Connecting to the Cosmos, Remembering Your Galactic Heritage and Embracing Your Oneness. Wow, that's this book, but guys, we'll we'll get into that. But she's a frequent contributor for Aspire Magazine, a sought after media guest and virtual event speaker, and has shared the virtual stage with many leading visionaries, including Martha Beck, Neil Don Walsh, Dr. Suze Mortar, Greg Braden, and Dr. Bruce Lipton, one of my favorites. She has created eight Oracle decks and designed intentional jewelry inspired by her passion of travel and nature. She loves teaching online courses and leads retreats in her home state of Hawaii. She also leads night sky UFO tours on the big island of Hawaii. Wow. Now you guys know why I'm so excited. Welcome, Dr. Lisa. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me here, Debbie. I, I really appreciate you. Oh my gosh. I, you know, I don't always read everybody's, you know, longer bios, but there was just so much goodness in it. And I thought, oh no, I need to share this because, you know, I mean, I would love to be able to share uh, the stage. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. I really like this format. I love podcasting. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. So welcome. (laughs) And I love that you shared your book and I love the uh, the extra special guests that we have. So our listeners may not be able to see it, but if you go and watch it also on YouTube, you'll be able to see and why I'm so excited because I'm so fascinated by a Galactica ambassador. (laughs) I mean, I'm just like, where do I start? Where Uh, do I start? For those that are able to see the video in the background, we have Celestia, which is my purple Syrian. And then we have Al E.N. Jr., who is a Zeta. (laughs) And they're in the book. And the next podcast episode, we're going to talk about in depth about the book, too. Because there's a lot of goodness in that book. So I'm curious um, on... How did you end up in Hawaii? Yeah. And uh, doing UFO tours and writing a book about connecting to the cosmos. Um, so I do you want the Cliff Notes version? <laughs> yeah, let's let's share some of the goodness. <laughs> so um I moved to the Big Island of Hawaii from Olympia, Washington. Um, so quite a change. And my husband and I, with my daughter and our pets, moved here in December of 2020, so right in the middle of the pandemic. And how it came about was I was doing most of my work virtually. And with COVID, my husband, who was a mortgage broker at the time, he actually started meeting all his clients virtually as well. And so my daughter, she's the one that um, suggested the idea of like, I don't want to live here in Olympia anymore. I want to move to California. And My human design, I have sacral um, inner authority. So my gut tells me a yes or a no. And as soon as she said, California, I'm like, nope, (laughs) I got a wrong no. And, but, but then it came out of my mouth without me even thinking, I'm like, I moved to Hawaii. And then my husband, who's also sacral inner authority, he's like, I moved to Hawaii. 
And that was in May of 2020. And we made it happen by December. We bought a house. We sold our house in Olympia. We moved the family and the pets. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how we got to Hawaii. Um, now, I was I had a spiritual business, but I was not fully, um, I guess, out of the proverbial closet yet um, with the world, with my galactic heritage and and really the work that I've done throughout my life with my different um, higher dimensional beings. And so, and most of that was because I had, I felt like I had to wear a mask to be taken seriously in all of my former careers so that people would actually give me business. And, oh, yeah. you know, I think a lot of people go through that. Mm -hmm. They have to on, feel like they have to put on a persona and can't share who they really are. And so, I was, I was able to finally, when I got here to the big Island, um, I let go of my former company that I was still running from afar, which was a design company. And so with that gone, it was like, okay, I can be fully myself. And there's so much energy here on the Island. So we have the most active volcano in the world, which goddess Pele she stirs up all the stuff that wants to be healed you don't need, you just you're on island for a day and stuff starts coming up and so she was like no you're here to do some different work <laughs> <laughs> and so um we started big island ufo tours almost a year ago so september of 2021 and I didn't know I was going to write a book at that point. Um, I just knew that I had a passion talking about um, this topic and really educating people because there's so much misinformation out there. And um, we had done a similar tour in Sedona, Arizona um, five years ago. And I know you're in Flagstaff, so you're nearby. And so we got to use the military night vision goggles on our Sedona UFO tour and I've been an experiencer my whole life, but seeing the night sky with those goggles is a totally different experience. And so we realized like how much activity there is here in Hawaii and Pele put us in a place where we have clear skies. We're basically in the desert of the big island. And so hardly rains. <laughs> so we have full, full, beautiful, starry skies, um, which make it perfect for viewing the spacecraft. Oh. And so then I started something just, I was in kind of a cocoon for maybe five months at the end of last year where I didn't know what my next step was going to be in my business, but I started writing about my experiences with my different aliens and UFOs and my, my life. And I was sharing that as blogs and a few people were like, i your book's coming, your book's right, being written right now. And so then I started teaching classes at the beginning of the year and the content that I was creating for the classes. Um, a couple months ago, I'm like, oh, wow, I have all this content. Yep. I guess I'm birthing a book. <laughs> so that's how it came about. Oh yeah. And I'm, I'm reading the book and it is really hard to put down. And Thank because you. It's, it's just so well written and it's, it's written without all of this, the words that just came in, where's this mumbo jumbo that people are just trying to confuse you. It's just like, here's what I've received. I'm here to sh share with you because I'm at the more the beginning part of the journey just this year being curious about gal the Galactica. Like I've looked up at the skies and have felt connected and this year with there has just been and i've always looked at the big cloud formations and but what i've noticed and it's i see it so much now on social media this last year is that you know um these formations of the clouds and they call them some i forgot what name that they have the, the lenticular clouds yeah yeah and you look at them Right. And then you're like, no, oh, that's, that's, I wonder who's in those clouds. What's in the, like the, 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 just so much more intense in this last year. 
And I remember when we were ending the year 2020, and I remember joking around with friends saying, oh, well, what's coming this year? Are the aliens are landing? And then, well, they're already here. They are here. And the government, right in the middle of COVID, basically admitted, yep, they're here. But everyone was so distracted with COVID that a lot of people missed it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but there's been slow disclosure since 2017. That's when it really started of people like whistleblowers leaking videos and more information. And I think even though like for me, because I've had my personal experiences, I don't need the government to come out and say that it's real because I already know it's real. But for other people that are a little more skeptical or need the proof, um, I think it's helping them to open their minds more. And that's what we're actually seeing when people come on our UFO tours. We have a whole range of people. Some are just curious. Some are full believers and experiencers. Well, I think that there's this, I don't know, how do I say this? Uh, articulate it so it might make sense. There's something innately known that we're not alone in the universe. Yeah. I, I think hardly anybody doesn't feel that way. Um, yeah, it's interesting because I come from a science background. I'm, I'm a biologist. I have a PhD in biology and even, so I got my degree in 2000 and my cohorts, a couple of them, I would share my stories and they'd be like, uh, yeah, no, that's not real. You know, you're just making it up or it's just in your imagination or it was just a dream. And, you know, because they're just very pragmatic scientists, like there is no proof, we have nothing, we would have found it by now. And the thing is that there's so many different forms of life and in different dimensions that mainstream science, we don't have the technology and the tools to actually find some of the life that they're looking for out there. However, you know, now that the James Webb telescope is going around and taking these gorgeous pictures of the universe, I think people are realizing like, wow, there really is, there's a lot of potential out there for life. And so that's helping people to open their minds a little more too, because there's no way that we are alone. No way. <laughs> yeah. And isn't it um, intriguing the timing of the release of those pictures? Yes. Yes. And I mean, I, it's, I think more pictures are going to be showing things. In fact, there's one that I posted in my private Facebook group um, today that is a photo of a suspected mothership that's um, right outside of Jupiter's atmosphere. And as anyone who reads um, one of my stories in the book, I was taken to a moon of Jupiter. So Jupiter right now, there's a lot of talk in the UFO world of people who know about some of the secret missions that are going on. And Jupiter right now is the hot spot of activity for the Galactic Federation. Wow. See, and I'm like, you know, like way beyond being a newbie, right? I'm like, what? Like the communities, like. Yeah. <laughs> and well yeah, and I think that's what's so interesting is that there's these communities within the communities, and so many people know each other or they've heard of each other. And you know, when you're just curious about to begin, you're like, you're almost afraid, like when you just start down any type of spiritual path, you're like, okay, you don't have enough information to have your own discernment to right. know, like, who's really the real deal. Yeah. Well, it, there, I mean, there is a lot of misinformation out there and people, I mean, just like with anything, people have their own slant, their own perception of reality. And so um, every true, everyone's perception is correct because that's how they're seeing it. We all create our own reality. However, um, I choose to come from a love-based perspective. And so there's a lot of fear-based messaging around this topic that people don't even realize. And 
So that is one of my missions is to change that fear-based narrative that the government, media, and Hollywood have been perpetuating for many years and it's still going on. And they're, they're actually ramping it up to be like, okay, well now we're, we're releasing these videos of these UFOs. We don't know what they are. And so we have to perceive them as a threat. And so they're making a straw man out of these craft so that they can get more money, more funding to build more weapons and make people richer. Well, that's unfortunate. It is. That, that is unfortunate. You know, one of the things that you, um, and you're going to need to help me with the punctuation on this again, um, Arcturian. The Arcturians. Arcturians, yep. a star seed. And yeah. so I've heard the word star seed. Um, and is star seed just a, a general name? And then it, you are part of another universe or planet. I, I know this is a very basic question, but this is, this is where I'm starting. And I think people who are listening probably are too. Yeah, it's a really good question because there are a lot of people that throw that term around and it has different meanings depending on who's using it. Mm -hmm. So my definition of it is going to be maybe different than someone else that talks about star seeds or considers themselves. <laughs> so for me, what I, what it means is that we, okay. And this is true for everyone. We all have many, many parallel lives because at the quantum level, all timelines exist simultaneously. And so there really is no past, there is no future, everything is in the now. So we are living all of these lives, whether we are, it's multiple earth human lives or it's in higher dimensions um, as different beings from different star systems. We all have these different timelines going on. And for me as, um, being an Arcturian star seed, that is the group that at least currently I am most connected to, that I know I am one of them. Um, I'm part of their family. They have shared that with me and now they actually channel through me. And so now I also have lives as other beings. Like I have a life as a Syrian genetic engineer in ancient Egypt, where I was helping to modify the human body. I also have a Syrian life as a mermaid. <laughs> I have, like I have all these different lives, but the one that I really feel most compelled with are is the Arcturian message of love and unity, and those are the ones that um, that really want to work through me. Oh, I love how you uh, describe that. You know the whole um, the parallel lives. I think might be a newer concept for people listening. Like how, how is that possible? Like, how do you, how do you wrap your, our 3D world, right? Like, how do you <laughs> connect that to like, okay, that doesn't sound, there's that part of you when you're learning different parts of uh, spiritual stuff is it's all grouped together. You know, how much stuff is grouped together. It's pretty big. And and something just feels right when you start doing your subconscious work and people are, you know, you're like, okay, like, you know, Dr. Bruce Lipton that, that yeah, you share the stairs, what, right? Like all that science and you're listening to it and you're like, okay, that all makes sense. And you're like, I don't even need to question it. You just kind of know what he's saying to be true for removing the, our beliefs. Right. Well, and I mean, I, I've been following him since the late nineties. And in fact, when I was a professor, I was teaching his stuff to my students. It wasn't in the textbooks, of course, because it was not mainstream. It was very fringe. And some of my students were like, this is crazy. This isn't true. But now here we are 22 years later, and there's tons of epigenetic research going on. And it really is true that our our environment actually creates what, what genes we're going to be expressing, you know, what mm -hmm. proteins we're going to be creating. And so we have ultimate ability to shift to different timelines because even, even as earth humans, 
we can shift to a different timeline in a different reality where it might just be a really subtle change, but it's a whole different like trajectory of where it's going to take you in life. And if you just keep making subtle little baby step changes, you are shifting timelines. Now, in our 3D reality, anytime you have third and fourth dimension and lower reality, things are vibrating very slow. Things are very dense. And we do have perceived linear time because it's so slow. But when you raise your vibration to the higher levels, fifth dimension and higher, there's no more polarity. Time starts basically becoming non-existent. And so a lot of these beings, they, they can do what we would call time travel because they can just pick which, which time point, which little snippet um, of an experience they want to jump to and they're there. And so they can, like everything is existing at the same time. So even my pa past human lives that I've experienced as a past life regression therapist, are really happening right now. And when we go into those lives and see them and make any changes, we do have a butterfly effect where it can propagate that change throughout the entire existence of your soul. Wow. <laughs> that's a lot. So that was a lot, right? Like that's a lot to absorb. So let me see. So how I absorb is that I try to apply what you say to an ex a life experience that I can think of, you know, now, right? Or this lifetime, because that's what I'm connected into. Yeah. And, and so when we talk about like um, the different timelines and we talk about like, I can look back on my life, say in my twenties mm -hmm. And over the last couple of years, something has really shifted on how I look at it. It actually feels like somebody else's life sometimes, not all the time, mm -hmm. but there are moments like I feel it right now um, when I'm in a different energy, it feels like, and I, maybe two weeks ago, I saw a picture. It was like a Christmas picture with me and some friends and my son's dad. And I'm looking at this picture of myself. Yeah. I'm like, who was that? Like, I just want to reach in and go, oh, honey, you don't need to do all of this. Like, this is too much. Like, right. But yeah. that was what led to me being a mom. And so I'm very grateful for that. But the big but is that I feel so disconnected from it, though I still feel like some of the good feelings that happen, but they're so rare. I, I don't even feel like that was me. In fact, I can look at pictures. If I showed you a picture of this person and who I look like now, you're like, I mean, I weigh more and I'm obviously a couple decades older, but right. I don't even feel like I look like that person. Yeah. I and totally, it's this lifetime. Right. I totally understand. And people are shifting into those different timelines all the time because every choice that you make basically splinters off into two different realities that are coexisting. And so, you know, I know you have left that marriage. I've left two other marriages, but there is, there's a timeline that exists where we're still married to those people and it's existing right now, <laughs> which again, it's quantum mechanics is crazy. Like the, the things that we have learned from understanding quantum mechanics. Yeah. It, for a lot of people, just mind blowing. So I just got a vision of um, that movie, Inter is it Interstellar, with um, where they're on the Earth, and he goes off and some ex. I think that's the name of the movie where he goes off on this um, trip. Right, he's a a scientist, but then he's when he's coming back, he can see his daughter young with an experience that he lived with pushing the book out of the bookcase yeah yes I remember that now and well and the movie sliding doors with Gwyneth mm -hmm. Paltrow. did you see that one yes so that is a beautiful example of what we're talking about two divergent paths just by one choice being made that mm -hmm. they are they are existing simultaneously and so it's like which where is our consciousness residing because that even though those other lives are existing, we're not fully conscious of them, mm -hmm. but we can actually go to them 
if we choose to, when we're in a really relaxed state. I kind of like this, this timeline now. Yeah. yeah I mean, it's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of nice, you know, but so then tell me then like, um, one of the things that I picked out of your book and it was that, um, anth- anthropologists with this missing link to our modern day humans, mm-hmm. that sentence alone just went, huh? Yeah. You know, what, what is what is that? I guess, what does that mean? What does it mean? Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So we have, we have missing links. I'm a former evolutionary biologist. So we, as an evolutionary biologist, we would study the transitions of one form to another. And in evolution, there are two major ways that things typically evolve. One is gradualism, where you can see very tiny changes being made over time gradually. And then we have what we call punctuated equilibrium, where something, it's the same for a very long time. And all of a sudden, there's a huge change in that form, creating a completely different species. And now in those huge transitions, the really amazing ones, so we don't have missing links for that. So something, something potentially external created that evolutionary change. And so if you if you apply that to hominids, so, you know, we're, we're in the homo genus. And so we have Lucy, who was the original, or at least back in 2000, she was the original. I don't, I haven't kept up to know if they've discovered one that was even earlier than Lucy, but you have these different transitions of the human form, you know, over a period of time, But when you get to modern day human, homo sapiens, there is such a massive shift in terms of our, how we think, how we're built, our physiology compared to anything before us. And that doesn't, that doesn't happen in natural evolution, but there are different chunks of time as humans have been evolving, like like with that transition to homo sapiens. So what I know and understand is that we have up to 22 different alien races in our DNA. And so we've had different ET groups coming to earth since the early dinosaur days, actually, um, manipulating the human form to, they were trying to create a perfect form, a perfect energy vessel And unfortunately, the experiment got ruined a little bit when the big meteor hit with the dinosaurs and brought bacteria and disease. (laughs) And they were thinking of scrapping the whole experiment, but they decided, okay, no, let's just see how it plays out. But they have been coming in and modifying our DNA. And so... I do talk about this in the book. I talk about the, um, the evolution of the humanoid form throughout the galaxy, because it's fascinating how, how it all played out. And, you know, I, I've researched this. I've also um, understood it from a channeling perspective. There is a very well-respected channeler that channels this being who talks about this whole galactic history But then I've also had my own experiences of seeing my life as one of these genetic engineers doing, doing this modification of the body and, and what it really did, like the time that I was, I am doing it because it's still simultaneous (laughs) in, in earth linear time, it's in the past, but in ancient Egypt. So what it was doing, um, was really changing the physical form so we could hold more energy because we are spiritual beings. We are energy beings. We're 90% energy, 10% physical. And people forget that because, you know, we're just so dense. Yeah. Now, does that, is that why there's a big, um, like, I want to say pilgrimage, what's that? Um, where people want to go to Egypt Oh, the pilgrimage of going to Egypt. Yeah. Yeah. Like, is that why there's such a pull for some people to go there? Like well, some people definitely have lives in Egypt throughout Egypt's history. And 
I've always had a very like strong interest in Egypt. I haven't been there yet, but I, I didn't necessarily feel like I was Egyptian. And now I know why, because I wasn't, I was there as a Syrian <laughs> genetic engineer oh. working with the Egyptians. Yeah. So uh, one of the things I started to read, it was that, you know, take a look at the cultures that we feel called to. Mm-hmm. So, and, you know, they're associated star seed. So is like, I feel a draw to, well, I used to travel in my previous world, right? I worked in high tech and I do um, uh, scientific problem solving, teach it, uh, leadership coaching. And so I was running a program in high tech where I was in Asia a lot because there's a lot of manufacturing. That's where our manufacturing was. And so I spent time in a lot of uh, Asian cultures and some of them I felt really connected, like, mm-hmm. and all of them actually in different ways. But the one that I was like, oh, I just wanted to like stay there was in Thailand. Oh, I love Thailand. And the elephants and um, the people, you know, not necessarily in Bangkok because, or, um, but you know, when you're out, because we're in a more rural area, you know, where you're out eating and the here comes an elephant, right? Like with people, of course, but you know, that you can give them sugar cane and stuff like that's more of a touristy thing, but these elephants energetically had, didn't have, their energy was love. And yeah. this is the land of smiles. And I was called there, you know, and when I would go to the Philippines, I did my first uh, scuba dive in the Batangas area. And I just felt so connected, mm-hmm. so connected when I was out there in that water. And um, I can't recall if I saw animals, but um, the experience itself was so freeing. And so I'm like, so um is there a cross reference or something like, is, is it like by country? Is it by region when Uh, they start thinking about this or? uh, That's a good question. So um, depends on kind of what region of Asia, because Asia is such a massive area, but um, like in Japan. uh, And so, and this is something I teach on the, on the tours. So Hawaii is very connected to the Pleiadian star system. And they believe they come from actually the Pleiadian star people. That's where the Hawaiians believe they come from. But if you think of the lost continent of Lemuria, Mm -hmm. ancient Lemuria spanned from Easter Island to Hawaii down through the Nisias to New Zealand. And the Lemuria, originally the Arcturians were the ones teaching the Lemurians, but That didn't last very long. And then the Pleiadians came down and had the major effect in this region. And it spanned to um, Australia, to Japan. And so the Pleiadians play a huge part in the mythology of the spirituality of these different Pacific Rim countries. Now, Thailand and India and some of those others, um, more vegan. So Vega is a star in the Lyra constellation. And so the Vegans really had this deep spiritual um, teaching that they brought to different cultures within Asia as well. So there might be a combination of Pleiadian and Vegan uh, mysticism in those countries. Wow. But then like the Syrians, you know, have a huge part in, um, in, Egypt, but they also are related to the Mayan culture in Mm. Mexico and the Dogon tribe in Africa. So they were kind of all over that area and taught them technology, medicine, science, things of that nature. Whereas the Pleiadians and Vegans were more spiritual, not technological. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Well, that, that's so interesting. I've never even, I haven't heard of the, the, the vegans. So, I mean, I am really new, right? Like I am just barely sticking my toe in because I just feel some 
calling to learn more and mm-hmm. I don't really uh, understand it. Right. I, and then I have been, you know, where it's like, okay, I need to use some discernment on who I'm learning from as well. So thank you for sharing that because it's really, um, I think really important to understand just like when we're doing work, you need a clear channel. And so for sure. And use, I would say to your audience, just use your own like inner knowingness. Everyone has intuition. Everyone knows like, Hey, does this sit right with me or not? Mm -hmm. And the healthier that your mind is like, if you've worked through some of your shadows and, and, you know, you see things more from a love perspective, then you're going to be able to discern that information better than if you are stuck in fear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, so important to understand. So when we talk about that, there's 22, there was Mm -hmm. 22. Yeah. Up to 22, 22 DNAs Mm -hmm. that were interact with us. So then, um, and I wrote this down was upgrade and activate latent DNA. And is that referring back to it's referring back to the Syrians. I love that. Syrians, when they modified the DNA in ancient Egypt times, they they basically um, inserted DNA that was laying dormant. And it would only be activated when enough people were starting to wake up in their consciousness, which is happening now. And that's why, and I just got full body chills because that's actually what's happening a lot of people are being activated, whether they know it or not. I, um, you know, it happens, it can happen all the time, but there can be like a really massive one. And back um, last October, I had a massive DNA activation happen where when I came out of that, and number one, it knocked me out for several hours, um, the energy that was running through my body and changing. But when I came out of it, I was, I, automatically just started speaking light language through my hands and it opened up the channel for me to be able to like really write and speak my Arcturians. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So how would, how would you explain light language? Um, so light language comes in three major categories, essentially. Um, it's an energy. It's, it's not something that you can translate verbally. Like it doesn't, Um, So when you're speaking light language, it comes out as different symbols. It sounds like a foreign language. And when you're, when you're the one speaking it or even listening to it, you can feel the energy of it resonating in your body. Um, And so someone like Tracy Mahan, who I don't know if she's been live on the show yet, but she does speak light language regularly. And she has Um, been working with me a little bit to help open up my vocal part of the light language but now it can also come through your hands and it's almost like a dance or like a sign language but it's not American sign language so you know the hands will just start moving and and when the hands are moving in a certain way and people are experiencing that and even when I do it I can feel the energy moving through my body and I get tingles and I use that in my healing work. And then some people actually see symbols. They look kind of similar to music notes. Um, That's how I would describe it most closely, like hieroglyphic um, music notes. And so some people write it out or they, they just see it in their mind. So that's the way light language can come through. When you were just doing the light language with your hands, I felt a wave of energy. Did you? And and just, would you do it for a couple seconds? And (laughs) like, how can I like receive that? You know, you're in Hawaii and I'm in Arizona. Well, and Um, that's the beauty of, we are all connected. We, every single one of us is connected. And we are, we're connected to each other. We're connected to source directly. So everything that exists is connected. And that is how people can do remote healing. That's, you know, it's really just energy and knowing that that connection exists. Mm -hmm. Oh, 
There, there's just so much. We're going to have to have another episode because what you shared is a lot of information to be able to um, absorb in this timeline, right? Of being able to understand. Because I, I, I honestly believe that innately we know that we're not here alone. Mm-hmm. Innately, we know that there are things that we just cannot um, explain or things that have happened in our timeline of where all of a sudden we have this invention where they were struggling with something and all of a sudden it's peaceful, like conflict. And then all of a sudden it's, we're more peaceful. There's resolution, things end. Yes. And a pot, you know, in conflict. Yes. Well, and even on the science technology medicine front, you know, there, there's a reason why inventors and scientists around the world, they all get the same idea at the same time, or even movie makers do this, like, because it's out there in, in the universe, it's out there in source and it, you know, whoever it may be, whatever it may be is putting out, like, now's the time, whoever is going to tap into that is going to be able to produce that. And yeah. it's available mm-hmm. for everyone. Yeah, I, I've heard that. I think it's a big magic that I've heard that with, that she talks about it in the book. Um, okay. Is that Elizabeth uh, Gilbert? Yes, Elizabeth yeah. Gilbert talks about it. How she'll get an idea. I mean, she goes into it in her book, but then she's like, she starts going down there. She got, she went off on another project, came back to it and it just, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then she connected with somebody who was writing the same book. Right. And who was actually writing it better. So she's like, okay, the idea is somebody, it's going to keep coming into different people exactly. until the, the idea can come through. Yes. And it can come through multiple people because just like, you know, just like people who are religious, they need to hear certain things in a way that they resonate with. So there can't just be one religion for the entire human population because there's too much diversity everyone needs to hear it the way that they need to. And so thus we have, you know, thousands of ascended masters that have been teaching throughout our time on earth. (laughs) And we have, you know, connection with these higher beings and yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, it's quite powerful, you know, in, in trying to, um, absorb it and, to say, okay, well, that makes sense. That's almost like when you're thinking about a friend you haven't talked to in a long time and your mm-hmm. phone rings and it's them. Yes. Well, again, that's that, that's that strong connection. We are all connected. Mm-hmm. And so we can send thoughts, we can send energy um, and it all, it all works. Yeah. So how about, um, I was going to ask you, cause you're channeling um, your Arcturian, my star seed, and he's sending uh, messages down to you. Is there something that uh, that has been coming through like more frequently or like a frequent, I don't know, trends the right word, but something that is like becoming more urgent or. Yes. Um, well, especially um, so I know the Roe v. Wade decision, you know, that weighed heavy on me, on a lot of women in our country. Mm-hmm. Myself so, included. Yeah. yeah. And so one of the things that I wanted to know is like, okay, how, what is my role in this? Like, what, what would you like me to do um, in terms of, and what message can I share for other people? And so when I, what I, what I did was I got into my trance state and I turned on my memo and I let Uluru speak through me into the memo. And, you know, I just let it flow. No judgment on what the words were going to be. And ultimately, because we do have these multiple timelines existing is focus on the timeline that you want to see happen. Like be in it as if that is the timeline you are living. This is also how people manifest really well. So if you have no doubt that, you know, this is the reality, 
and you're going about your day just like fully living that, then you will shift to that timeline. And it's so, you know, again, it's kind of mind blowing that that's actually real. So he, so he was saying, do not focus on the negative, on the fear, on, you know, what's going on, because that's only one reality. There are all these other realities. And so just focus on the one that you do want. And there are other messengers that come through with that message, you know, all the time as well. Well, that's a really powerful message. Just focus on the timeline that you want. So if I apply that to, you know, we're here on a podcast, light up your worth podcast. And the timeline is that this is the message that it's this global message. I'm in 24 countries today. And, you know, just had two more join this last week or so. So that was pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. And so I'm in the timeline that this becomes a bigger vehicle for a bigger message and that it's able to really help the consciousness at a much greater level than it is at this exact moment of this recording. Yes. And I, I know it's happening and it's here now. It's here now. Yes. That, that our connection, this vibration that we're sharing in this high frequency energy and connecting in and, and I want to say normalizing what is not known for so many people listening. Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and what they want, they want me to stay out of the polarity. Like they want me to truly, cause I, I've, I've known about this kind of information since I was 13 years old. So turning 50 this year. So, you know, a good 37 years I have been working with, with this knowledge and now have I always applied it? No, you know, I had to go through life lessons, (laughs) but, but I've come back full circle to it and really now applying it in my life. And, you know, I am here to rise above the polarity, rise out of the judgment, really see things from that higher perspective. And, you know, I don't necessarily want to say I'm a way shower, but I am kind of like, I am a light. I am, I'm here for a reason and they are, I'm allowing them to work through me now because they are at such a higher dimension. They see everything. They see what the re like what really is true and the basis of the universe. Everything is love everything is love and unity. And as soon as you hit fifth dimension and higher, there's no more polarity. And so really that's what the awakening is about. Shifting to that fifth dimensional vibration is that when we get to that stage, then we do have peace on earth. We have love. We have compassion. No more war. Yeah. What is the, the saying of, you know, is to find our own inner peace, to do our own inner healing and why it's so important that we take a look at our own beliefs, our own experiences, our own ancestral experiences, galactica experiences to clear out what needs to be released. The trauma, I don't want to call it the work, but I, I know that's a popular term because I feel like it's part of the experience. It's not work. No, it's, it's, I mean, the thing is, is that we, you know, as earth humans, we came here as earth humans. We chose to come here for whatever reason. Some of us came to show people the way to a higher vibrational life. Other people came to learn really hard lessons. I'm one of both. Like I had really hard lessons to learn and, and I, because I had those hard lessons, now I can help people see that there's a way out of that. You don't have to be stuck. And, and I actually have fully embraced those life lessons and the wisdom that I gained, knowing that that is why I had to, why I chose to go through that. Because a lot of people just are stuck and we, 
everyone has the ability to heal themselves, to remove blockages, limitations, to truly live their best life. They just have to know it's possible. And so for people like you and me that have been through it, and now we're out on the other side and living a much more beautiful life, what a beautiful gift to the world. Yeah. And I think that's why I love highlighting. It's part of, you know, that highlighting of, okay, if somebody's on the show, Mm -hmm. you know, I don't want to say they've been vetted, but that's an icky word, but I, I, I meet people before they're on and fill out that energy. And I mean, of course, everybody has to use their own discernment of who feels good for what you want right now to help as who can be your partner through that part of some releasing or healing of what you need to go through. And I, and what I have noticed is that with all guests is that they went through some experiences that, that, and how it's been explained to me is that you had to go through those experiences to be able to trigger that reflection process, that dark soul of the night you, it, you had to get to that point to be able to trigger the healing and the remembering to begin the, the beginning of the journey to remember who you really are. Yes. Well, and, <laughs> um, there are some people that come in that just want a super easy life. So they just choose like cushion the whole way, but they're not, there is kind of a rest life when they're doing that. They're not here to, um, work through the stuff or gain the wisdom to feedback to source. So there are people that seem to have like their entire life is easy. And, and, but most of us, we, you know, we come here because we know that earth is number one. It's an amusement park. I like to say one of my chapters is being a tourist on planet earth. We have so much diversity and amazing things here that we don't have in the higher dimensions. And so sometimes we just want to take a vacation, like let's go play on earth and have some fun. And then some people get caught up into, okay, oh, I'm stuck in the karma cycle or, you know, I, okay, let me try this lesson out or let me see how long it takes to find you again. Like with my, my current husband, (laughs) we, I joke with him all the time. I'm like, yeah, we, we definitely played a game to see how long it would take us and what we would have to go through to find each other again. Because so we've been together like in multiple timelines. Um, and so it took us 40 something years, you know, to find each other, but we did. Oh, well, <laughs> is mine going to find me? No. <laughs> yes. Remember? So we had a session. Uh, yes. Yeah. Italy. Mine's coming. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had a really amazing really amazing session and highly, highly recommend somebody doing some one-on-one work with you. Um, really powerful. So as we, uh, start to wrap up, I want to make sure that people know how they can get a hold of you through each of the different areas. So how can they connect with you? Okay. So, um, All of my services and products, except for the UFO tours, is on my main website, which is www.drlisajthompson.com. Or if it's easier to remember, mysticmanta.com. They'll take you to the same place. (laughs) Mystic Manta is the name of my company. Um, Manta rays are my number one spirit animal. So that's why I named my company that. So that's where you can find my books, my Oracle decks, past life regression, human design, um, my retreats, all of that. And then if you're interested in coming to the big Island of Hawaii and doing a UFO tour, then that's big Island UFO tours.com. Um, I am on Facebook. Um, I do have a business page, Dr. Lisa Thompson. I also have a big Island UFO tours page. I have a couple of groups. So for people that really like this um, cosmos, galactic kind of topic, I have a group called Connection to the Cosmos, and it's a private group, so pe- people feel safe in there if they're sharing things mm-hmm. about this. Um, and then I have Sacred Soul Spaces with Dr. Lisa Thompson group. So I've got a lot, and I'm on Instagram, um, not as much as Facebook, and I have a YouTube channel as well. 
which is Connection to the Cosmos with Dr. Lisa Thompson. <laughs> and I've really enjoyed your YouTube channel. I've listened to quite a few episodes. I guess you can still call them that on YouTube, but yeah, thank you. A I've, wide variety of people and how their perspective is. Right. Well, and my, my goal with having that podcast, that show is really to introduce people to concepts that maybe they haven't heard about before that are about these higher realms that people's experiences with ETs, angels, fairies, Bigfoot, you name it. (laughs) And also, you know, these energy healing modalities that really work, you know, Western medicine has its place. Like if you break your arm or, you know, you need surgery for something it has its place, but the energetic healing, the more natural healing really is the way that I grew up and it works. Yeah. 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 I, I agree that there's a place, like if I break my arm, I'm not going to go do a energetic healing session. Uh, I might, after it's been set, uh, to clear up the trauma that's moved into my subconscious or, you know, triggered that bee stung. I don't know why I just remember being stung by a bee right now. It is just the strangest things that sometimes just come through when we're in the zone, but, you know, and I want to do a shout out because we did uh, your past regression and uh, past life regression, right? Is that what it was termed? And, and it was mind blowing. Like it was really uh, a very unique experience, a positive experience I'm saying here is through multiple timelines that we went through mm-hmm. and all having this uh, thing about love and voice and speaking. And, and it really, um, if I needed validation of this podcast, there was, it was definitely there. Um, it was almost like the cherry on top of being able to share all of these, uh, you know, divine souls that come through, whether it's through a spiritual modality or some of the people doing the life coaching with their niches or authors with their books that are related and even a few therapists, right. Who are all connected, uh, believing in more of the mystical woo metaphysical realms. And so, it was, uh, it was really, um, powerful. Um, that's not really the word I'm using though, but it, it, you can really understand the perspective of the timelines through that experience, how it all yes. kind of intersects in a really beautiful way, uh, without being able to explain, you know, I'm obviously not going to share my, my right. reading with people, but, um, yeah, it was just a really beautiful thing to, to do or go go take a ufo tour oh my gosh and i'm right here like i need to go find the one in sedona then <laughs> right. yeah. well and the one there are several tour companies in sedona that do it um the one that i did who her name is melinda she she ran it and i don't know how the other companies are compared to hers but i mean she was good and she's an experiencer too yeah, that's really powerful. Well, I hope when people do go out to the big island, I know that you're doing a retreat next year out there in uh, Kona and yes. in 2023. And so that's on my uh, short list of being able to, you know, experience it myself out there because I've been out to Kona with the volcano and it was pretty powerful swimming. I I mean, I had some really phenomenal uh, spectrum of experiences, even that tunnel that you can go through on the tour, right? Yeah. Wow. Like that's all full of something happening. We are one of the highest energy places on earth. And, you know, people who visit, they, they can feel the energy and, you know, Pele, she stirs stuff up. She makes sure like she does her, her job. Her energy is like, pull it up. Cause now when you see it, you can heal it. You can remove it. Um, now people who move here, the Island either brings you in like Pele, she embraces you or it spits you out because <laughs> some people can't handle that energy. 
<laughs> so. Well, maybe they just come to a tour and yeah. experience it if they're going to, if they're drawn to move there as well. So that's just beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being here. This is like, um, such a learning experience and I love how easily you can walk us through things that might just seem kind of conceptually into uh being able to absorb it and go oh, okay that kind of that makes sense or I could see that I can feel that and that resonates with me so thank you yeah, well thank you so much and you know some of it it's just it can take a while to wrap your mind around it or you being might be like, ah, whatever. Okay. Whether it's true or not, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think everybody knows it's true. It's just at the level of what they want to wade into the pool on. huh? <laughs> and it doesn't even matter if you believe it because it's true. <laughs> so just like all of our stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, well, thank you again. <laughs> Thank you.